All right, chip of the day. Chip of the day is the LM3524. Uh, That's what I have. I have a 3524. In fact, I have a bunch of them. I don't know why. But they are fully interchangeable with the LM3542. Non D, I don't know what the D is anyway. Yeah, they're a really, really weird part. They are a regulated pulse width modulator. So I did a series once on making uh, DC to DC converters using a 555 timer. And uh, you could change the uh, pulse uh, repetition to modify how many volts come out, you know more pulses, higher voltage, less pulses, lower voltage. Well, you could also do that, instead of doing it in the frequency domain, you could do it in the width. You could just change the width of your of your signals and you can change the modulation that way as well. So, uh, this chip is very confusing. <laughs> so I thought, oh great, I'll just do a chip of the day. That'll be real simple. And I've been stuck on this thing for a day now. It's, it's a weird chip. Uh, so yeah, let me show you the chip. Here it is. So the first thing is uh, the ground is pin eight. That makes sense. It's a 16 pin device. And you would think that pin 16 would be the input and pin 16 is not. Pin 15 is the input and pin 16 is an output that goes through a voltage regulator. So you can put in 12 volts, let's say on pin 15 and five volts comes out pin 16. So the five volt is actually a 1% uh, accurate um, 5 volt reference. And you can use that for biasing and stuff, but we'll kind of see that later. You need a, a stable voltage to do your, your voltage regulation because this thing ends up being a voltage regulator. So this kind of is that Zener diode that you see in some regulators. It's a 1% it's a uh, voltage regulator, uh, 5 volts. And the 5 volts is used internally to run some flip-flops and stuff. And then it goes external for you to use. Uh, yeah, very strange. Okay, so there's a weirdness over here. There's some weirdness over here. Let's go down to the very, very bottom. So whenever you have something that is too complicated to understand, try to figure out what you can understand. So I definitely can, can I definitely can uh, understand the five volt regulator and I can measure pin 16 and sure enough, it's five volts. Uh, okay, so that works. Um, let's see how the oscillator, the oscillator works with just one capacitor and one resistor. And you put a capacitor to ground and a resistor to ground on pin six and seven. So over here, I've got a 10 K resistor going to pin six and a 0 0.01 going to pin seven, my two favorite components. Um, and so, okay. So far, so good. So we have that going in here. Now it says the output of the oscillator comes over here to pin three. All right, so let's find an oscilloscope probe that we can borrow here. One, two, three, here's pin three. And let me put it on, uh, use the scope probe since it's triggering on channel one. And let's see what we have. Uh, we need more voltage. Oops. And where's our trigger? There's our trigger level. So, okay. So we're outputting these little pulses. So, uh, 13.7 kilohertz is what those little pulses are coming out at. Okay. So let's go back to the data sheet and sure enough, the data sheet says there should be pulses coming out. So, so far so good. So we have the oscillator running and the oscillator goes into these flip flops. So there's two different types of flip-flops. There's a set reset flip-flop, SR, so set reset, set reset. And we don't know what this does yet, so we're gonna ignore that one. So what is this type of flip-flop? Well, this type of flip-flop is a T input, a trigger input, which means that every single time it sees a pulse, it'll flop states. So it'll just go Q, not Q, Q, not Q, Q, not Q. It'll flop back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Whenever it sees these pulses, the pulses go into the trigger. And it has a P, which is probably a preset. And that comes over here to this transistor. And that comes over here to this transistor. And that comes here to, so I don't have anything on pin 10, so this transistor can't be on. So this thing should be toggling. And I don't know if this thing is gated correctly or not, but let's see if we get any output. Um, 
it'll be on pin 13 and 14. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, ground the emitter and I'm going to pull up the uh, I'm going to pull up the collector to plus V and then we can monitor pin 13. Okay. So let's, let's look at pin 13. Let's see, pin 13 is this one right here. Okay. Let's see what's going on. Pin 13, uh, something weird. Uh, pin 13 is kind of getting kind of big there. So it's, toggling but it's kind of asynchronous so let's uh do a single shot okay so everything every time it sees a pulse it's toggling so okay that makes sense i don't know why it's kind of asynchronous there it wasn't syncing quite right but maybe it's still okay um so uh how about the other one what do i mean by other one how about this uh, other transistor here? So again, I'm going to connect its emitter to ground and I'm going to pull him up. So let's see what pin 12 is doing. That's this one over here. Okay, he's doing the same thing. Hmm, okay. So, uh, I am going to put LEDs on those two and I'm going to slow the clock way down. I've got a 0 0.01. I'm going to change that to a, uh, what is this thing? A 47 microfarad. That's pretty healthy. 47. All right. And look at that. We'll go with this two toggle, these two here. Flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop. Um, so, basically those two flip flops are 180 degrees out of phase with one another. Okay, well that's interesting. And we know they both turn on and off. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so what else can we figure out? All right, so these two guys flop on and off, 180 degrees out of phase. So let's see what this thing over here does, okay? Uh, we've got the shutdown thing. Not too interested in that right now. Uh, mostly interested in this comparator. It says comparator right on it. And it goes into the set. So what what is this comparing? Well, it's comparing to these amplifiers. So it's comparing to some input voltage. These, these This is this error amp. So it's going to be looking at the voltage that you're generating. And it's going to be saying, okay, whatever this voltage is, compare it to this other one. And if they cross that threshold, then, then trigger the... Uh, trigger the flip-flop. So what is it comparing it to? Well, it's comparing it to pin 7, which is this ramp, okay? So yeah, so let's take a look at, let's take a look at that ramp. Okay, here's our, uh, here's our ramp, and uh, sometimes it goes and sometimes it doesn't go. Again, I don't know why it's flopping back and forth. Oh, that's probably the two, the two different stages, right? One flip flop, the other. F I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, I do know that it's generating a ramp. All right. So it's so there's a comparator that compare with that ramp. Okay, that's interesting. So now let's go back to the circuit and figure out what else we can do. Well, we read, we read the description of the data sheet, and the data sheet says, yeah, these things can be amplifiers, and they are actually transconductance amplifiers. Uh, very odd. So voltage in, current out, and there's a current that goes into the comparator, and that sets up and everything, and there's a compensation pin, but it says for, for certain applications you can just input a voltage on pin 9, which is compensation, and you can override these amplifiers. You can just override their current output. You can put a voltage here, and you can force a voltage on the comparator. Okay, so that's going to be interesting, and that's on pin nine. All right, so we'll go to pin nine and we are going to put a voltage on pin nine. And if we take a look, data sheet.
All right, so the day sheet says here, if you come in pin nine, you go between one volt and four volts, or one volt and three and a half volts, it goes from a 0% duty cycle to a 40% duty cycle. Okay, that's kind of weird. All right, so let's give it a try. Let's input some voltage and see what goes on. All right, so uh, we have, this is our output, this is our ramp. Let's go ahead and trigger on channel two. I think that will make it easier to see. Yeah, yeah, now it's nice and stable. Okay, so now if we change the voltage, uh, I'm gonna go to two volts. Oh, look at that. We can change the, uh, we can change the duty cycle. Uh, right at about three and a half volts, it maxes out and then go down, 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 it goes to zero. Okay, so we can change the duty cycle. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now, here comes the really, really weird part. All right, let's go back to the data sheet. It says, go ahead and short the two collectors out. Um, and in fact, most of the applications use both of the collectors shorted out. So even though they're kind of flopping back and forth, one of them handles half of the waveform, the other one handles the other half of the waveform, and you short the two collectors together. Ah, phew, wow, uh, kind of weird, but we're gonna do that. So uh, here is with just one of the collectors, and now here's with both of the collectors. So both of the collectors are tied together, and now I'm gonna change the incoming voltage. Oh yeah, now it's acting just like a pulse width modulator. We can go all the way to 100%, all the way down to 1%, right? We can go all the way back and forth. Very, very cool. So it is sort of what they say it is. They say it's a pulse width modulation uh, thingy bobber. Um, but you use both of the, the collectors tied together to do it. Um, and you can use the amps and stuff. So I'm, oh, like I said, I'm kind of overriding these two things. So yeah, so let's look at a typical circuit. So here's a typical circuit. It looks just like a normal DC to DC converter. There's, a, there's one inductor that we pull down, a diode to, to catch the positive peaks, and then a uh, capacitor to smooth it out. So it looks very, 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 very familiar. All right. The output gets fed back around. In fact, there's an RF, R feedback, comes back into the um, the inverting pin. There's a, here's a non-inverting pin. So that first gain amplifier, that thing called an error amp, we are going to compare some voltage coming back this way with some fixed voltage, and that fixed voltage is coming along with the voltage reference, that five volts that it generates. You take that five volts that's being generated and you have a 5K, 5K to ground. So you're generating two and a half volts right here. So you're going to make this thing do its thing right around two and a half volts. Two and a half volts is golden. So whatever voltage you want on the output comes along here and it gets resisted, divided by this feedback and another 5K and this is two and a half. So if this were like a 10K and this is a 5K, or let's say this is a 10K and this is a 10K, or 5K, five, I'm sorry, let's start that over. Let's say we have 5K, 5K here, and we have 5K, 5K here. Then the input gets divided by two and it gets compared with this over here. So if this is two, one, two and a half volts and this is two and a half volts, that means we're gonna regulate the output to five volts. Um, and then when, if we double the feedback resistor, that would go to 10 volts. We triple it, would go to 15 volts. So we can set whatever voltage we want out by changing this feedback resistor. And whatever it is, it gets divided down and gets compared to this two and a half. So that's the way it normally works. I think it's way over complicated for what it needs to be. And you can see that the um, inductor is being uh, driven by the collector of the A transistor and the collector of the B transistor both. So it's being driven with both transistors. Um, and then to get complicated, there's a bunch of other apps in here to add external circuitry to do higher currents and stuff. But anyway, yeah, it's a really, really weird chip. Um, but
I always think about strange chips is could I use them for other things? Okay. Well, this one has a nice 5 volt reference that could be useful. It has an oscillator, just an RC oscillator. That seemed to work okay. Uh, if we don't use this part, we can just get a square wave out of it. That seemed useful. It has floating transistors. That's very useful. Floating, floating uh, emitter and floating collector. So that's really useful. Um, it has some amplifiers. In fact, it has a transconductance amplifier. It has comparator. So it has a lot of circuitry that you could use. It has this set, uh, reset. If you just tie this high, then it shuts down the whole thing by, by, by uh, turning off these two uh, 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 flip-flops. So it's got a lot of cool circuitry. Maybe you could repurpose it for something else. I think if you're just going to do DC to DC converter, there's much better, much better chips than this one. But anyway, it was in the drawer. And it is the chip of the day, the LM3524.